Hello ladies and gentlemen, and welcome back to another Meteorology Screencast by me, Mr. Stanner, your Earth Science teacher. And today we are going to talk about clouds. We've actually briefly mentioned just about every step in cloud formation. So a lot of this material that you'll be seeing or a lot of the information you'll be seeing in the next couple of screencasts should somewhat be of a review. So to begin, these are clouds. And I think most people know when you're looking up in the sky and you see that white, fluffy, cottony looking thing floating around in the air, that most likely it's a cloud. Now how that cloud formed or maybe uh, some human induced uh, reasons why clouds form, it's still a cloud and for the most part, the formation of them is gonna be the same. The first thing we'd like to think about is, usually when we see clouds, why are they white? So what ends up happening is the, the cloud is nothing more than reflecting light. But what has to be there to reflect light? Those are water droplets. So the top of this cloud, as light comes in, is going to hit and then reflect off some of that light. And remember, if it's white, that means it's reflecting all colors. Reflects all colors. That's your Roy G. Biv, part of your electromagnetic spectrum. Now the underneath of that cloud, as we get down underneath, is going to appear dark because that light is not really getting transmitted through, only a very small portion of it. So if only a small portion of light's getting transmitted through, it's dark at the bottom and light at the top. So what are clouds basically? They're nothing more than masses of water droplets suspended up in the air. And notice that I said water droplets water droplets, H2O as a liquid. It's not water vapor, it is a liquid water suspended up in the air. That means it's held up. So we have these little droplets, here they are, and they're just kind of hanging around up in the air, suspended or being held up by very small wind currents. So we see the arrows pushing the water droplets up. You should already be thinking, well, what's the density of that air? What kind of pressure is that air? And what kind of air moves upwards? The water that gets suspended up in the air uh, basically is liquid. So it means it has been vapor at some point in time. And that water came from usually lakes, streams, oceans, really any place where water could have evaporated from, puddles, uh, pools, it doesn't matter what it is. Some of that water gets up into the air through transpiration. Transpiration is basically where water uh, is lost through the leaves of plants. And then evapotranspiration is the combined effects of evaporation and transpiration. Here are the steps involved in cloud formation. So the first step is we have warm, moist air rises and expands. That explains those upward arrows that I drew before, holding some of these droplets up. So that warm, moist air rises and expands, and it rises because it's less dense. As the air rises, it begins to cool down. Remember, as we increase our altitude, the temperature decreases. So as this air goes higher and higher up into the sky, it starts to cool down. It cools to the dew point. Remember, the air has some sort of moisture in it that evaporated or transpired off of something. So we have water vapor in the air. That air rises up into the, to the atmosphere. It cools down. And when it cools down, it cools to the dew point. When it cools to the dew point, as long as there's something there in the atmosphere, and by I mean sur something, I mean a surface upon which condensation droplets can stick to, dirt, salt, smoke, pollution, it doesn't matter what it is, the water vapor will condense onto those surface. So once it condenses onto those surfaces, then clouds form. And these are basically your four C's of cloud formation. Cools, condenses, around condensation nuclei, clouds form. Those are your four C's, or pretty much those are your steps in cloud formation. Now, 
How do we get warm air? That's all going to depend on maybe the specific heat of the land underneath or water underneath at which it forms. How fast it cools is going to determine is really going to be dependent on the area and how fast it is rising. How much condensation occurs is also going to depend on how much condensation nuclei is present in the area. So, but these are your basic steps. What we do notice though is that clouds because they condense around condensation nuclei, they basically clean the atmosphere. So as condensation occurs, they condense around these little dust and smoke particles. And then eventually, though all those particles add up, they start colliding with each other, become heavy enough, and then they fall through the sky and enter the ground or other bodies of water. So essentially, when clouds form and it rains, it pulls any of that dust and particles out of the air and brings it towards the ground. Here's a side view right here of two different pressure systems. We have our high pressure where we have sinking air. Notice that in high pressure or the sinking air, because it's more dense, we have no clouds. Clouds will not form with sinking air. As air sinks, it actually heats up a little bit. Remember, it's the inverse relationship between altitude and temperature. On our low pressure side over here, we have hot air rises because it's less dense. So it rises up. As it rises, it cools to the dew point and condensation occurs. So low pressure associated with these clouds because it's rising air. The air is moving upwards. Also, just a one quick side note from the last screencast, our winds are going from high to low. Here's a little condensation nuclei, and we have two different areas. We have a nice coastal area right here, and we have a city. Cities have the potential for throwing more condensation nuclei up into the atmosphere. So because there's more condensation nuclei in the atmosphere, there's a tendency for those areas to have worse fog uh, in those areas when condensation is occurring close to the ground. Here's just looking at the comparison between raindrops and condensation nuclei. So we can see here all the way at the bottom, this is the condensation nucleus, 0 0.0002 millimeters, extremely small to, what is that, hundreds, uh, sorry, tens, hundreds, thousands, ten, two thousands, two ten thousandths of a millimeter, extremely small versus a cloud droplet, 0 0.02 millimeters, and then a raindrop, two millimeters. So you can see how they get bigger as they go up and compare to each other. These are typically seen in our skies, especially over Long Island, but two or actually I would say two to three major airports in the area. We see planes flying over the contrails from planes. Those clouds that are coming from the engines are different than clouds in the sky. These are human induced. These form because the gas, the exhaust gases coming from these engines right here have a huge amount of water vapor in them for the co uh, combustion process. So because they're hot, with a high amount of water vapor in them, when they hit the cold air, condensation occurs and you see these clouds behind it. There are a couple of different types of clouds associated with different altitudes and different weather. Uh, for this course, we really don't need to know the cloud types, but it's nice to know kind of just to see the general view of these clouds and just to have a rough idea just in case they ever come up again. We have cirrus clouds, also known as our high altitude clouds, um, associated with a change in weather as like certain fronts move in or certain air masses move in. We might see these high altitude clouds forming. We have cumulus clouds, uh, very typical clouds. I think most people have seen these before also associated with fair weather. So this is kind of, we just have this cloud formation right here. Uh, no thunderstorms or nothing like that really forming. We have stratus clouds. Uh, stratus clouds we saw maybe about a week ago when we had some rain. These are these thick blankets of clouds that come over the atmosphere, definitely lower in the atmosphere also. And these are going to be associated with a lot of rainy weather uh, for periods of time. And then we have cumulonimbus clouds. These are thunderstorm clouds. Anvil clouds, which we've talked about in an EPOD a couple of weeks back. Um, so we're familiar with them. These are interesting because there's a lot going on. We have our rising air right here, 
and then as it rises, it comes outwards and then sinks. So we get these amazing downdrafts also associated with the clouds that are forming, giving them their characteristic shape. And this is just a little cloud chart looking at the number of different clouds and the altitudes at which they are forming at. And that's it. That's cloud formation. Remember the four C's of cloud formation. So we have to have air cools. Then it condenses around condensation nuclei and then cloud forms. Remember that your four C's of cloud formation, the air cools because it's rising, that's moist, warm air. It rises because it's less dense, cools to the dew point, condenses around as particles in the atmosphere or condensation nuclei, and then clouds form. That's it. Four seeds of cloud formation. Uh, next screencast will be about precipitation. Hope you look. Uh, hope you enjoyed this screencast. Have a good day. Take care and good night.